Happy Wednesday. It's Kyle Kittleson, host at Med Circle. Today, I had the privilege of doing a live class in our Med Circle membership, which is separate than our YouTube channel membership. I know many of you are also Med Circle members. That's at medcircle.com. But we do these live classes with doctors each week. And today, or this week's, was uh, with Dr. Judy. She's a triple board certified forensic and neuropsychologist. And the topic was around self care. And so we talked a lot about the misconceptions of self care and good self care versus self indulgence and um, how you can tell when self care is actually improving your life or when those behaviors are hurting your life, et cetera. And while we were having this conversation, I had this realization, which really changed a few things for me as I think about what self-care is. I had this previous idea, this false belief, that in order for something to be considered, quote, self-care, it has to be something that I like doing. So if I'm getting a massage, that's self-care. I love massages. If I'm sitting on the couch with my dog eating ice cream and watching TV, I love all those things. That would be considered self-care for me under this false belief. You can understand the examples. Now, while those things are considered self-care, I think there is another column of activities and behaviors that are also considered or should also be considered self-care behaviors even if I don't like doing them. So if I cut caffeine after 12 p.m., that's a self-care behavior for me, even though I want to have a Diet Coke about this time. It's 4.30 my time. If I cut that, knowing it's going to give me better sleep, it's going to, which will in turn help me be more prepared for the next day, that is a form of self-care, I think. I work out three days a week. I know I've talked about this ad nauseum on Med Circle. I dislike it. So I bring it up a lot because I don't like it. I actually just came back from the gym. You know those people who are like, don't you feel so good after you work out? No. I feel tired. I'm sore. I'm like, God, I'm so glad that's over. You know? And if you do feel good, it's because you're not doing it anymore. You know? If my hand was touching a hot stove, and then I took it off, I'd be like, oh, that feels so much better. That doesn't mean the hot stove was awesome. It just means it's better, you know. <laughs> of course, I'm just I'm just being a little, a little negative. What's wrong with that? Enough toxic positivity. But I work out three days a week. I don't like doing it, but I do it because it's good for me. Actually, is my mic on? Let me make sure my mic's on. Yes, it is. It's good for me. It's good for my mind. It's good for my body. I know I was just trashing it, but I sleep better. I, I do feel better like long term. I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, I feel better. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and it makes me feel good about myself when I do it. I'm like, look at me. I'm a guy who goes to the gym, baby. You know, so all of that is a form of self-care. If I grab broccoli instead of a donut, I think that is a form of self-care. But don't get it twisted. Grabbing a donut can also be a form of self-care. I'm not saying I'm not saying that the opposite is true. What I'm saying is that things that I don't like doing but are good for me are a form of self-care, where things that I like doing and might be, quote, unhealthy for me can also be a form of self-care. That is, that is the Kyle Kittleson current thought process and methodology on self-care and and how we should look at it and the reason i like that mindset and the, i have this epiphany so to speak today is because it does two things it makes my self-care activities that i don't like doing more palatable i was at the gym today and i'm like oh i hate this but i'm doing it Oh, on our YouTube channel, we're at a we we're at another hundred thousand subscribers, one point one million. Awesome. So I'm going to this video to read any comments that might be coming in live. So um, it it does two things. One, it allows me to uh, get through those things I don't like doing because I'm like, hey, this is important. This is self care. So I've got to do it. Look good for me, you know. And then second, 
when I go indulge myself in something I do like doing, so if I go, you know, chill in a hot bath for 40 minutes, my mind isn't going, well, look at you, you lazy son of a gun. Is, isn't life just so easy that you can take 45 minutes, just sit here? I'm going, no, this is, this is also part of my self-care. And so if we're equalizing the self-care behaviors, Gym is self-care. Eating healthy is self-care. Binge watching Netflix is self-care. Then all of a sudden, we don't view them as good or bad. We view them all as good. <laughs> and we talk in, we talked in the class that, of course, certain, quote, self-care behaviors or certain behaviors um, that are indulgent can, of course, cross the line into unhealthy. If you are on your, if you haven't left your house in three weeks and are only eating ice cream and watching TV, that's probably not a healthy way to do it. But if it's Saturday and you're like, whew, I just binged that show for three hours and I feel good. I feel rested. My brain had a nice little break. I can go to dinner tonight with my friends and I feel prepared for that. Where are my introverts at? then I, I think it becomes incredibly powerful. Another realization, I don't want to call it this so much as a realization for me, but it certainly was a reminder for me, and perhaps for somebody out there, it will be a realiz realization or a nice reminder, is that, Callie, are you okay? My dog is acting weird. Is that we constantly compare self-care across multiple people, meaning or for example, Dr. Judy loves to exercise, you know, and good for you, Dr. Judy. That's just not me. She loves it though. That's great for her. So when she, and she, the thing she loves to do also just happens to be good for her. I love to binge watch TV. That thing, that too much of that is not good for me. And so if I was only comparing myself to Dr. Judy and me, well then naturally, I'm going to feel really bad about the, the desirable self-care behaviors that I innately are drawn to. So I'm like, well, why can't I be like Dr. She loves working out. Why can't I love working out? I'm going to like working out because Dr. Julie likes to work out. Or that friend who, hey, do you ever go on vacation? And you're, you're in a hotel. And um, or it doesn't even have to be a hotel. It can just be on a, on a weekend. Okay. Well, you're not even on vacation. Whether you're on vacation or not, it doesn't matter. And you wake up on Saturday morning, let's say it's eight o'clock. First of all, why are you sleep? Why are you getting up so early on vacation? But anyway, you wake up and you see somebody coming back from the gym on their vacation. Or you see somebody, you know, grabbing their um their Starbucks and him and his wife just came back from the from a workout from a little run on vacation, on their vacation in Miami. They woke up early on Saturday and went for a run. Oh, my gosh. That is not me. That's not me. And if I looked at that and was like, well, that needs to be me, then it negates all of my self-care behaviors that I want to do, which is sleep in, baby. That's a self-care behavior, too. And it also makes this ridiculous assumption that... <laughs> What other people do for them is what I should be doing for myself. And when you, when I hear even myself say that, I go, gosh, is that not so true? Like, why would I, I don't even know half of these people. And even if I knew them, who cares? Our job is to get very clear with ourselves, not compare ourselves very clearly with everybody else. That is nonsense. That is ridiculous. I say that, but it's still difficult to do. I still have so much guilt. The other the other week, I, my dad left me a voicemail. I didn't call him back all day. The next day, I call him back, and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's on a Sunday. And I go, hey, dad. And he goes, oh, are you just getting up? Now, look, he's not wrong. There are plenty of days that I sleep past 10 o'clock. But I hadn't. I had been up for a while. And it just, it, I was just like, oh, God, like. Why do you say that to me? No, I'm not just getting up, you know, but it is. Why did I bring that up? Oh, because I still hold that stigma. 
So when he says that, if I didn't hold that stigma to myself, it probably wouldn't bother me, but it bothered me a little bit. You know, I'd say just like a smidge. I was like a little bothered by the comment because I have a little bit of guilt of, of being viewed as lazy because I like to sleep late, which is so silly. So I don't want to ramble too much. And for those of you who just said, well, it's too late for that, you're not wrong. But this is what I get when I'm here streaming by myself. What else can I do but ramble? But my goal of this is to uh, share my takeaways from this member-only med circle class around self-care so that it could possibly encourage you to think about your own self-care behaviors and how you can prioritize your self-care behaviors. Because if we're just focused on everybody else, and I know parents, y'all are really guilty on this. Now, I'm not a parent, so I'm not judging or shaming here. I just speak to a lot of parents who are so focused on everyone else. They're focused on their spouse. They're focused on their kids. They're focused on other family members, on the school, on the pandemic, on the neighbors. They're just so focused on everyone else that the idea for them to even take a minute for themselves and think, what could I do for myself that would be good for my physical and mental health? They haven't even asked that question. And then when they do and they go, you know, it'd be really good for my physical and mental health to eat a whole bunch of cookie dough. And um, and uh, I'm trying to think of a good show I'm watching. There aren't that many. If you have any good recommendations, leave them in the comment section. I need a good show to binge watch. But And, and watching TV, they go, well, I can't do that because, you know, Mrs. Taylor would never do that. And she's so fabulous. So I can't do it. Yeah, girl, you can. You can. You can do that. You can do that. And. If you make a great choice in the middle of the week to do 15 minutes of stretching, and you're like, I don't want to stretch right now, but it'd be good for me. The doctor said I, said I should stretch, sh said I should stretch more, and you do it, and you're like, I don't like doing this. Well, that's also self care, and you did that too, and good for you. You're you're actually prioritizing your self care. You're not just prioritizing the things you want to do. And again, there is nothing wrong with prioritizing the things you want to do either. There's my permission for everybody. I love to know your thoughts in the chat below. If you also have any topics or guests, we're going to start bringing guests on into the YouTube channel membership area. This is, of course, closed off to the public. It's a little more intimate, much more exclusive. Please leave those recommendations in the comment section below this video. Um, we also have a brand new series coming out on YouTube um, pretty soon. I think I can announce this. Maybe I won't just in case, but it is um, it's a really fabulous series. It either was nominated for a Share Care Award or won a Share Care Award, which is Share Care, as my understanding, is like um, it's under the Emmy umbrella, but it is a, a awards for video content in the health space. So not just behavioral health. Um, all health space and med circle since its inception, since share cares inception has been multiple of our series have been nominated every year and we've won a handful of times. And this is one of those series that was either, like I said, nominated or won. So we're going to release that publicly. I'm certain it will help a lot of people be incredibly impactful. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you to all our YouTube channel members. Love seeing you guys. I'll come back and read the comments in a little bit for now. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Well, and for now, I'm Kyle Kittleson. And later, I'll still be Kyle Kittleson. Okay? Remember, whatever you're going through, you got this.